Hey everybody, today I've got an After Effects tutorial for you. I want to show you a couple cool effects that you can create using nothing but LaForge and these new fluid motion clips that we just uploaded. There are 60 of them, but 5 of them are free, so if you have a free account you can follow along with this tutorial as well. Go ahead and grab a few that look cool to you. Don't worry about what colors there are in the video, because the effects that we're going to create don't rely on the color, we're going to change them completely. So pick the ones that have the coolest motion. I think I'll grab this one, number 33. And then for a lava effect, I'm going to use number 24. Now remember, the color doesn't matter. It just happens to kind of look like lava already, but this effect will work even if you pick one of these blue ones. Okay, let's start by recreating this cool lava title sequence. I'm going to import my footage, and you might notice by default that these are 60 frames per second, and that is really cool for most effects, but I want this to seem really big and epic, so I want to slow it down. I'm going to reinterpret the footage as 30 frames per second, which will also give me the benefit of making it twice as long. So the way you do that is you click on the clip here in the project window and you hit Control alt g and then right here where it says conform to frame rate, type in 30. And now instead of a 5 second clip at 60 frames per second, we have a 10 second clip at 30 frames per second. Okay, let's drag and drop this onto the timeline. And I'm going to start by creating a glow effect right away using the LaForge plugin. Now don't worry, even if you don't have a pro account, you can still download the plugin and work with a watermarked version. So I'm going to create a new adjustment layer, and I'll name it Glow. And then with that layer selected, I'll click on the Glow effect in the LaForge window and press Apply Selected. You can move this window off to the side, and now you can see we've got a nice glow effect going. This doesn't quite look like lava yet, so let's adjust the colors. Clicking back on the bottom layer, I'm going to add the Colorama effect. And just to see what's going on, let's actually disable the glow layer for now. I'm going to open up the output cycle menu in the Colorama effect, and I'll change the preset to Fire. And this is the step where no matter which clip you used, we're going to convert it to a fiery effect. This already looks pretty cool, but it's kind of hard to adjust with this many points on the color wheel, so I like to delete a few of them to make it simpler. I'm going to start by deleting the black one, and maybe I'll remove every other point around the wheel. And you can see that it's actually pretty much the same. It didn't really change much, but it just makes it a lot easier to control. So now what I want to do is just try to get a nice orangey lava effect. Okay, and next what I want to do is actually create the solidified dark lava that floats on top of the liquid surface. So let's drag another copy of our footage down and place it in between the glow and our bottom layer. And let's apply hue and saturation to fully desaturate this layer because we're just trying to create the black floating solid lava. Okay, maybe we can actually create a levels effect and place that above hue and saturation. And we can try to crush this to increase the contrast. Something like this. Now I don't want the lava to actually be pure black, that's not very realistic. So let's create another Colorama effect and place it onto this layer. In the output cycle, I'm going to get rid of all but two of these colors. We just want two colors. And I'm going to bring them both up very close to the top, like this. The one on the left, I'm going to make it pure white. And then the one on the right, I want to make it a very dark red. The next thing we want to do is just toggle this layer on and off to make sure that the darkest part of this second layer lines up with the darkest part of the layer below it. It's very easy to accidentally move these little points around on the Colorama wheel to invert the image. So just make sure that this dark point is to the left and the darkest parts of both images line up. Okay, let's set the blending mode of the second layer to darken and let's turn our glow back on. Okay, now you can see why we did that. By darkening those pixels, we ensure that they don't end up glowing. Okay, next let's go into the glow effect and make some adjustments. I'm going to decrease the size to about maybe 350, 360, somewhere in there. Maybe I'll lower the intensity just a little bit. I've found that by lowering the directions, you can end up with some interesting almost lens artifacts. But if you go too low, it starts to look fake, so maybe around 12 or 15. I'm going to decrease the blurring to about 4, and I'm also going to decrease the stretch Y to about maybe 50. And this creates sort of a sideways anamorphic lens glare. At this point, we pretty much have the effect so we can make whatever changes we want. For example, we can try to maybe desaturate some of the colors in the original lava glow. You could also experiment with adding another adjustment layer just beneath the glow layer and maybe add a hue and saturation effect, maybe also curves, to try to fine-tune the look of your lava. There's no right answer here. It all just depends on the look that you're trying to recreate. For my part, I think I want a little bit more orange and a little bit less yellow. So I'm going to change this color to be a little bit more orangey. Yeah, now we're talking. 
To create some heat ripples, I'm going to add the turbulent displace effect to the adjustment layer that's below the glow. To make it animate, I'm going to add a keyframe to the evolution control on the first frame, and then scrub down to the last frame, and I'll set the evolution to maybe 10. The noise is way too big, so let's decrease the size to make it smaller. And I can also tell that it's way too slow, so let's go down to the last keyframe again, and maybe I'll change the evolution to 100. Okay, that's better, but it's a little bit too intense, so let's turn the amount down to maybe 20 instead of 50. And now we've got some heat ripples. All right, and now we could add some text or maybe a logo. I just happen to have this transparent production crate logo, so I'll drop that below my color adjustment. Or if you don't want your logo to wiggle like this, you can drop it above that adjustment layer. This effect works best if our logo is black, so I'll invert it. And you can see that the glow effect from LaForge is actually going around the edges of our logo. So at this point, we can actually go back into the glow effect and increase the size of the glow, the intensity, and we can kind of fine tune it even more at this point. You can animate your logo however you want, but for my project, I just wanted to slowly zoom in. Now that's pretty much the effect, but if you look at footage from the inside of volcanoes, you can tell that they're filmed from really far away and zoomed in. So let's introduce a little bit of camera shake and a little bit of lens effect so it seems like we're using a really long lens to capture this shot. I'm going to create a new null object, and I'm going to make this null object wiggle. If you're a pro user, you can use the Create Camera Shake plugin, and I'll show you guys that plugin on the next effect that I'm about to show you, but for this one, I'm going to try to keep it free, so I'm just going to use a simple wiggle expression. It doesn't have as much cool control, and it's not as easy as the Create plugin, but if you don't have a pro account, this can work just fine for a lot of cases. So on the null object, press P to expose the position slider, and press Alt click on the stopwatch, and type in wiggle with parentheses at the end. And let's start with 10 frames, 10 times a second. So I'm going to type in 10 comma 10 inside of those parentheses. And now what we can do is actually parent any layer that we want to wiggle to the null. So I'm going to parent both of my fluid layers to the null object right here. And the same thing with my logo. And if you press play, you'll notice that now it looks like there's camera shake. Now we do have a problem. If I look at the corner of my composition, I can see that the edges of the image are showing as it shakes. Because we didn't use the plugin, we have to fix that manually. So here's how we do that. Go down to both of your fluid motion layers and press S for scale and increase the scale on both of these layers by the same amount, something like 105. And that just scales up the image and ensures that it never goes outside the borders. Okay, and let's add a little bit of a lens effect to this. I'm gonna add one more adjustment layer. And on that adjustment layer, I'm gonna add chromatic aberration from the LaForge plugin. This effect is really simple, but really powerful. If you crank up the aberration slider, you can see what it's doing is it stretches the edge of the image and blurs it. And it also separates the color channels, just like if we had a cheap lens. So I'm actually going to lower my aberration, but I'm gonna move the center off over here somewhere. I'm not trying to recreate a realistic lens effect. I'm just trying to create something cool and stylish. Okay, and if we press play, here's the final lava effect. Pretty quick and easy, right? The core of this effect comes from applying the glow filter from the LaForge plugin on top of really cool footage and then applying the chromatic aberration on top of that. But these LaForge effects are so powerful, they don't even really need interesting footage. They can just work by themselves to make something equally as cool. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to create a new composition about 10 seconds long and then I'll add a new solid and I'll pick a nice fiery orange for it. And then I'm going to apply a CC sphere effect to it. Let's increase the radius. And under the light menu, I'm going to increase the height. Now let's grab the ellipse tool. I'm going to change the fill to black and the stroke to black as well. And I'll draw a circle right there. Now let's add a new adjustment layer. And on that adjustment layer, I'm going to add that glow effect from LaForge. And let's increase the size and the intensity. Maybe I'll lower the stretch Y We'll increase the blurring, just generally fiddling with the sliders to try to create an intense bloom effect. And you can see what we're doing. We're actually creating an eclipse with no footage, just effects. We can stylize this even further by adding another adjustment layer. And to that new top adjustment layer, I'm going to add chromatic aberration from LaForge. And maybe I can increase the aberration and once again, push it off center a little bit, just to make it look like it's filmed through a lens. We've set up our building blocks, so now if you need to make adjustments, it's really easy. We can add an adjustment layer just above the sun, and we can add a hue and saturation, and maybe even some curves to really control the brightness and the color of the sun. All that's left to do is animate the moon layer. 
To add a touch of realism, you can use one of our lens effects. This is a warm lens flare and just drop it up on top of the footage and set the blending mode to screen to add just a touch of realism. Of course, while you're at it, you can add as many effects as you want <laughs> to end up with a shot like this. For this shot, I just use some of our floating rocks and these meteorites. Okay, let me show you one more completely different effect that you can achieve with the motion fluids and with LaForge. For this shot, I'm gonna import motion fluid number 33, but again, you can use whichever one you want. Here's what this fluid looks like. Let's add a new adjustment layer. And on this adjustment layer, I'm gonna add Crate Height Relight. And you can see what this one did is it actually took the black and white values of the image and turned it into a height map or a displacement map. And then it added three lights in the scene. I'm gonna go into the effect and I'm gonna grab these anchor points and move the lights off camera. The effect that I'm going for, I want that to be a little bit more subtle. Let's also change the color of the lights. Sometimes I like to start with just gray lights and that helps me get a sense of the volume of the fluid but you could also pick whichever color you want. I'm not gonna go over every setting in this effect but there are a ton of options. You can play around with the height of the light. You can play around with the light intensities. But for this one, I'm gonna increase the height scale and that's going to separate the deepest part from the most shallow part. I'm also going to play around with the shadow softness slider a little bit and maybe a little bit of the shadow scatter just to soften it. Okay, and knowing what we know about how this effect works, how it takes the black and white values and creates a height map, we can actually use that to our advantage to place our logo or some text halfway into the fluid as if it's partially submerged. So for that, I'm gonna use the transparent production crate logo again. Let's drop that between the adjustment layer and the fluid footage. And because the logo is white, you can see that it's just putting it on top of everything and it's casting a shadow onto the fluid, which by itself is already a pretty cool effect. You could just leave it there if you wanted to. But I wanna blend this with the fluid. Let's change the blending mode of the logo to lighten and then let's add a levels effect to it. And we'll grab this slider and drag it to the left. And what we're doing is we're actually darkening the image of the logo and pushing it backwards into the fluid. If we look at it without the adjustment layer, you can see what's happening is we're darkening it. And as it becomes darker, certain parts of the fluid are obviously becoming lighter relative to it and they get placed on top. So we create this really cool effect. From here, we could stylize it even a little bit more. We could add a layer style to our logo and I'm gonna choose Inner Glow. And we're gonna use this to create kind of a beveled 3D edge. So inside of the layer style options, I'm gonna open up Inner Glow. We'll change the color to black, set the blending mode to Multiply. We'll change the technique from softer to precise, and then we'll increase the size. Let's turn our adjustment layer back on, and you can see that we've created a beveled 3D edge for the logo. Now doing that actually added kind of a weird effect here. So here's how we can fix that. Let's set the blending mode of our logo back to normal and let's delete that levels adjustment. And let's first pre-compose our logo before applying the blending mode and the effect. So I'm gonna to go to pre-compose and I'm gonna say move all attributes to the new composition. And now we can set our blending mode to lighten and add the levels effect and darken it down. And you can see by pre-composing first, we've cleaned up the edge of that just a little bit so it doesn't look as sharp and jarring. Okay, and here's the final effect. It's really trippy. Now this could actually be done, but let me show you a couple tips if you want to try to get a different look. So one thing you can do to really change up the footage and get lots of variety from the same clip is just invert that bottom original fluid layer. And you can see we get an inverted version of the height and it's like getting two clips from one. Now I'd like to make everything look like it's filmed from a camera, just like I did with the lava effect. This one kind of looks like it's inside of a, a lava lamp, so let's do that. I'm gonna highlight all of my layers and I'm going to pre-compose them. And the first thing I wanna do is add some camera shake. Now with the lava, I showed you how to do it free with just the wiggle expression, but this time I'm gonna use Create's camera shake script. It does something similar to the wiggle expression, but with a lot more control. So obviously we have a bunch of presets, but the really cool thing is you can change the amplitude and the frequency right here without having to type that little script. You can actually create just a jolt if you just want a quick camera shake as if someone bumped you as you were filming. And you can also auto scale and add motion blur. I've actually never tried the preset called long lens more shake. So let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna press shake, press continue, and you can see it's adding keyframes to our footage. Just let it do its thing and it's done. <laughs> I should have known by the name that it was going to be way more intense than I needed, but that's okay. It's really easy to just redo it, but I'll run with it. I'm going to add another adjustment layer 
and I'm going to add an effect called CC Lens. And let's increase the size until it fills the screen. And this gives us almost a refraction effect, like we're looking through glass and water into a lava lamp. Okay, and here's the final effect. Pretty cool. I'm glad I went with such an intense camera shake because it's kind of a happy accident. It kind of makes it seem a little bit creepier as if the person filming this is scared, you know? It just makes the whole thing kind of unsettling. All right, and that's it. We made some pretty cool things today with minimal effects and minimal assets. I'm really hoping that you guys take this and run with it and do some really crazy stuff. And if you do, be sure to tag us on Instagram with it or post it to the Discord. All right, later creators.